Top of the afternoon. It's another beautiful Saturday. I hope everybody is enjoying themselves. We are here for another live Q&A weekend session. Do these every weekend to provide you value. So I'm excited to be here. Hope you're excited to be here. And I'm ready for some questions today. I'm on fire. I am super excited to discuss business growth with you. And I have some important things that I'm going to share in this video. I'm talking super important things about supply and demand, especially right now, not only in the United States, but worldwide things that you need to be aware of. So if you're interested in finding out about those, make sure you watch this entire video and you spend this time with me because there's a ton of information. Post in the comments what you're doing right now. I want to know what you're doing. If you're spending time with the family, if you're working, whatever you're doing, post in the comments. I don't need an essay, just a short little brief description of what you're doing. I want to know how you spend your Saturdays. But like I said, today we're going to share a ton of information about supply and demand um, and issues that are happening right now in the supply chain worldwide and especially in the United States. So if you're interested in learning about that, make sure you stay tuned for the rest of this video. I'm here to provide you value and information about growing a successful business, whether that's an Amazon business or another another business. A growing business is really has a lot to do with your mindset and how you perform on a daily basis and how you remain motivated even through those tough times. That's what's super important. So we got some questions coming in here. Um, let's get right to them. They are, I ordered FIFA 15 from Amazon. <laughs> Why are you going all the way back to FIFA 15? They, they got like FIFA 21 out right now. Do you bother with OA from retailers or only wholesale? No, we do not bother with OA. It's just, it's, listen, OA is great if you're smaller, but if you're larger and you're trying to grow a really large Amazon business, OA is going to be very challenging to do that. Ordering ones and twos from all these different websites, unless you're using some sort of automated software to take care of all those transitions and transactions for you, it's very complicated to scale and grow. Um, and I know a few OA sellers that are doing close to a million dollars a year in sales. And really the biggest benefit I hear from them is the cash back from credit card purchases. They get a huge amount of cash back every month from credit card purchases. And that's really where they make a, um, most of their money. But OA, OA essentially kills the Amazon game. It, dri it drives prices down for, for other sellers. No, that doesn't mean, um, you know, there's always competition and we understand that. But it really kills some of these listings for uh because a lot of these sellers they just make money on the cash back and then they're listing the price at a dollar profit when it used to be at five dollar profit but that's neither neither right wrong or indifferent it's just what happens and when you're selling on amazon or you're running any business you kind of got to uh, you know join in with the ebbs and the flows and the peaks and the valleys and just keep moving forward i seller is packing fba products just worked out nice Nick Page just worked out. I'm about to hit the gym and probably after this live session as well, go work out for a little bit. Prime Day strategies for wholesale products. Yeah, FBA Daily. Um, so it's almost too late for Prime Day strategies. Now you can set up some uh, PPC campaigns. Are you in, I don't think you're in eSellers RI, but in eSellers RI we go over thoroughly how to set up converting low A cost uh, pay-per-click advertising. Now, um, if you wanted to get into lightning deals or deals of the day, they would have had to be put in place over a month ago, maybe even more for Prime Day. Um, I believe Prime Day is on the 13th, I think. I'm not sure, but it's too late to set those up. There's no more availability, um, so that would be an issue. But really just making sure strategy, your number one strategy for Prime Day, and really every day, but specifically Prime Day, is doing a quick inventory review prior to Prime Day. So like this weekend, it should be done because I believe Prime Day is on the 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Oh, look at this. I just found $20 in my phone case. That's exciting. A little $20 come up. It's probably, sometimes when I go to the gym, I put money in my phone case because um, I don't want to bring my wallet and then like to buy a, a protein shake after I work out. But sweet 20 bucks, forgot about. 
Um, so yeah, you want to be making sure your inventory is priced correctly. You want to make sure your buy box competitive. You want to make sure that you're able to compete for the buy box, win the buy box, so you can get more sales. Um, last year, Prime Day, we saw about $130,000, $140,000 in sales. We're expecting to do about the same right now, and our average right now sales day is probably $115,000. So there's a lot of opportunities. Um, Andy is filling some RA FBM orders nice if you're just joining us let me know what you're doing right now in the comments um, we're here to answer your questions I'm here to help you this is what I do this is part of my job I love helping you I love spending my weekends with you and in a couple minutes here I'm going to talk about some supply and supply chain issues that are going to be super beneficial to growing your Amazon business things you need to be aware of and things that you might not see the effects of for two or three months, but we are very deep in this industry and very deep in this business and we see them currently and we've been seeing them for a couple weeks and we're tracking the data and I want to let everybody know that this data is real and it's happening and, and I'm not Nostradamus, but I'm going to make a prediction here and usually a lot of our predictions are correct because it's based on historical data plus experience and, and those are the best two um, factors whenever analyzing everything, anything is historical data and experience experience from from my life those are the best two judging factors trying to place an order with my distributor awesome um, I'm doing OA on tactical before turning on the grill with the family nice spending some time with the family and working everybody if you're just joining welcome let me know what you're doing on the comments in Vegas at the Aria chilling what's Vegas looking like right now I actually just got an email from ASD talking about the Vegas show being open back up the ASD trade show being open back up I believe in March so um, you know I was gonna wait a little while before I booked my flights book my hotel room but if you could share what's going on in Vegas right now because you're in Vegas like mid COVID like what's it like is there people there because I know Vegas shut down for a minute um, let's see here what else we got yay questions time Any, anybody got any questions I'm here to help I am here to help you. Um, can you order me a stunt scooter? <laughs> no, bro, you can order yourself a stunt scooter. Why don't you like go get a paper route or some shit? Start walking the neighborhood dogs, planting flowers in your neighbor's gardens, um, you know, cleaning houses, washing cars, do some shit and buy yourself a scooter, bro. This ain't no free ride. OA is the same as drop shipping. Um, not necessarily. No, not if you're getting it shipped to your house. A lot of uh, people I know in the Amazon industry, yeah, they buy online, they ship it to their house, and then they ship it to the customer or ship it to Amazon. So no, drop shipping is um, when you purchase inventory from, let's say, a wholesaler, and or no, you put inventory for sale, list it for sale on Amazon, someone buys that product, you reach out to your wholesaler, they ship it to the customer. Mm -hmm. Now, online arbitrage has some um, a fine line between navigating within Amazon's terms of service and technically um, it's against Amazon's terms of service to drop ship from companies like Walmart and Target because the last thing Amazon wants is a Walmart box showing up to an Amazon customer because you did drop shipping. For grocery items, how do you manage rotating inventory? Um, so we make sure every grocery product we purchase has at least 120 days of, of inventory shelf life on it. For A, Amazon's requirements, they don't receive anything less than 90 days of inventory. And if it's received with less than 50 days, they dispose of it. So we make sure our inventory is dated correctly. And then also based on those expirations, we make educated pricing decisions. So if it's, let's say we're sending a product in that has 140 days of inventory or of shelf life left on it, and we're sending in three months of inventory, we're gonna be more aggressive with that pricing to make sure it drops 
Amazon in their fulfillment centers will not rotate your inventory based on expiration dates. They will not, it's not something they do. So it's up to you to track inventory and track expirations. So every single product we send into Amazon on a Google sheet, we have its documented expiration date along with the FN SKU that correlates to that expiration date. So if there is any issues with Amazon saying these items are unfulfillable because they're expired, we can submit a case saying, hey, I've checked my data, I've checked my history, and the documented expiration date I have is XXXXX, and it was sent on shipment XXXXS, and we sent this many units. Can you please investigate? Because based on my data, this product is not, in fact, expired. And then they'll respond and let you know if they did a bin check, and then whether it's expired or it's not expired. Oh, is Walmart increasing in sales? Yeah, Walmart's increasing a little bit. I know their stock's rising up. Um, that was with the talk about acquiring TikTok, though. And from us, from our perspective, Walmart still makes up less than a, a tenth of a percent of our entire business. Um, and also, we don't focus on Walmart. I feel Walmart would be better for your own private label products versus uh, wholesaling brand name products. From our experience, we have about 200 listings on Walmart. We sell maybe four to seven orders a day. So it's not like generating huge profits for us, but it moves some, some stagnant inventory. Hello, how do you convince a brand to work with you? You should have joined our brand workshop, my friend. We discussed that in detail, but to give you some information on how you can convince a brand to work with you is you need to find out their pain points. You need to review their listings before contacting them. You need to look at things that can provide them value because at the end of the day, Everybody is in a value center business. They all want more value. They all want to grow. So if you could provide them with, hey, I looked at your listings. I realized your pictures could use better infographics. So I've, I've gone and taken it under my wing to create an infographic for you. You can use it or you don't have to use it, but I think this will help convert sales. So you hit them with that value proposition and then they'll be like, wow, you know, um, whatever this guy, Y3318 over from AmazonSales.com, he really cares. He, he created this infographic for us. He wants to help our business grow. Let's give him an opportunity. Let's give him, you know, a 90-day trial where he sells our product on Amazon and he represents us and he's our third-party seller. And if he does a great job, we'll renew it to 180 days or, or 365 days and, and we'll give him exclusivity on these products. And then we'll maybe even let him create enhanced brand content. We'll give him advertising mm -hmm. funds and we'll really grow this relationship. I'm about to get your course. I'm in a Shopify seller. I'm a Shopify seller currently. Also, awesome, Jared. We're excited to have you in here. I promise you, I personally guarantee you that if you put in the work and you take action on the topics discussed, it is guaranteed 100% that your business will grow, whether you're just starting or you run an existing Amazon business. It's guaranteed. It's fucking guaranteed that your business will grow. Does your course include scripts for calling distributors? Absolutely, it calls script includes scripts and email templates for calling and contacting distributors. Um, pretty much copy and paste email templates. There's about in the total course, there's maybe 20 different templates, different templates for different types of distributors, different ways you met them, whether you met them at a trade show, you're reaching out for the first time through Google, there's different um, copy and paste templates that we provide you. And all you need to do is change your information in the company's name and you send it out. And there's, there's literally people in the course right now who are crushing it. Um, using those templates. How to buy your course. Um, you go to the link in our bio, click the link tree, it's the first option, or you can go to www.esellersri.com. You weren't expecting that $20, do a giveaway. Oh, actually, I'll do it after this, but we, we do have a giveaway. The giveaway was yesterday, so if you didn't join the giveaway, go to our most recent post on Instagram, tag one of your friends in the comments, like and share it, like and share. Um, Tag, like, and share. Comment, like, share. And you're entered to win the, the contest. And we're gonna give away some money. I totally forgot about that. Um, but we're gonna give away some money today, probably after this, uh, this live session here, we're gonna give away some money. So just go to our most recent post, like, comment, and share. I sell clothing, a single style, has duplicate listings with 100 variations. I've been swamped with Excel sheets, managing the inventory and labeling it all. Want to tear my hair out. Any advice? Yeah, uh, 
Listen, if clothing, listen, is the clothing product your brand? If it's not, you got to weigh your time versus um, success, you know, your time versus value that you're receiving from that time invested. We personally stay away from clothing items um, because of reasons like this. There's usually, you know, one listing, 40, 50, 60 variations, 20 different sizes, 25 different colors, male, female, it's very complicated. Um, and also return rate on clothing is, you know, 16, 17%. What are you going to do with a shirt that someone wore once, ripped the tags off, and returned to you? you? You practically can't do anything but use it as a rag or donate it or sell it at a flea market for the low low. So it, it, there's definitely some issues that come up there. But words of advice, uh, branch out to new categories. Don't let your only form of income be clothing. Now, if it's your clothing line, you just kind of got to deal with it because it's part of the hustle if it's your clothing line. But if you're selling brand name clothing, um, then then you could diversify your business model a little, which I encourage everybody selling on Amazon to do. I encourage everybody to diversify your business model. Don't just sell grocery products. Don't just sell baby products. Sell all of the categories, all of the products in all of the categories to optimize your growth. I just started your course and I have everything set up. Just need to do my blank. Nick Page, excited man. Uh, what's the blank though? Just need to do my, do my what? Social distancing is on, exist, is non-existent here, I bet. I went to Mount Airy Casino a couple days ago and it wasn't really happening there. Everybody was masked up. But let me answer a few more questions here then I'm gonna get into the meat and the potatoes of this. Is there any way to check for product sales on variation listings other than checking reviews? Um. Uh, Chrome extensions like RevSell are help with that. They give you the number of reviews per variation. So you could definitely check them out. Um, let's see here. I just started your course and I'm setting everything up and I just needed to find local distributors, but I'm seeing opportunities selling BJ's products. Should I do both or just start at one? No, you definitely do both, my friend. Don't limit yourself. If you could start making some money on some BJ's products, which we've done before in the past, and you could start reaching out to wholesalers and distributors and making money off of those products, do both. In the beginning, we did both. In the beginning, we were strictly retail arbitrage, going to Costco, um, Sam's Club, BJ's, buying products. And then we were making the slow transition into wholesale. It didn't happen overnight, but definitely do both, man. If it's bringing you bread, do both. Your beautiful cream said it's a great course. Appreciate you. Uh, do you buy mostly from distributors or direct from manufacturers? We buy mostly from distributors. Um, when you're going direct from manufacturers, sometimes it's even more expensive. For example, we have an account with Procter and Gamble. Um, you know, minimum order quantity is thirty thousand pounds, which is a full truckload. So you figure that's about a sixty thousand dollar order. Um, you know, certain SKUs have certain minimum order quantities, and it's very challenging to place orders direct to the manufacturer. I prefer to go with uh, with wholesalers and distributors. Now, um, is it very complicated to get an account with, say, a Procter & Gamble or a Unilever? Absolutely, it's very complicated. It took us probably a year and a half to finally get it situated. Um, and now that it's situated, we really don't place much orders with them because it's just more profitable to go with wholesalers and distributors. Um, East Sellers RI, J Biz says, advertising module is fuego. Nice, my friend. I want to see them sales pick up. I know they will once you implement those things. There's so many opportunities in that advertising module. I'm going to Foxwood tomorrow. Nice, Brian. Enjoy that. Um, Sebastian and I, we went to... We went to Mount Airy, I don't know, a little while ago. Between the two of us, we lost like $2,500. It was a very sad trip on the way home. We were just like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, but it was fun at the end of the day. You know, it's not like that's our rent money. Um, experience in industrial and scientific. Yeah, we actually have a private label product that's in industrial and scientific and it sells very well. Um, it sells about 500 orders a month. We're making $6 every time we sell it. So it's bringing us about, you know, $3,000 in profits a month. That's $36,000 profits in a year. And that's just one of the SKUs that are in that private label products company. Um, we also have about 25 other SKUs that sell a little less but are profitable. So it's great. 
Um, but you got to be mindful that industrial scientific, the rank needs to be lower than most categories. Don't you hate when you have the buy box on a product and all of the sudden Amazon comes in? Yeah, absolutely. I don't enjoy that. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody says they love when that happens. I know I definitely don't love that when that, when that happens, but it happens. It's part of the business, part of the industry. Top of the morning. Yeah, I normally lose 2K. <laughs> That's so funny, Brian. So, all right. So here it is. Um, I'm about to hit you with some supply chain issues. This is super important. So if you're planning on leaving, do not leave yet. This is game changing information in here that we've gathered over the past couple weeks. And, and like I said earlier, I'm not Nostradamus. I do not pr predict the future, but I use data and experience to, to track trends and kind of see where the market is going. And based on our experience, Sebastian and I talking about it frequently, analyzing spreadsheets and catalogs, we see that the United States is facing the same problems that they started facing in March and April, which is a supply chain issue. Now, the supply is dwindling and the demand is increasing. So when the supply dwindles and the demand increases, this is basic economics 101, the price will increase for those products. So based on our experience, and you will see it too, you might not see it for three, four, five weeks, um, we've seen it in the past three or four or five weeks and we're continuing to see it is limited stock from our distributors and prices gradually increasing. And so what that tells us is that there is a supply and demand issue in the United States. And what that tells me is that there's COVID wave two right around the corner. And I've been talking about COVID wave two for probably three months. It's the fall, it's flu season, people are going to be getting sick and stores are going to begin shutting down again. And once again, I'm not Nostradamus. I'm not predicting the future. But based on my experience, this is what I see happening. This is what I see happening to the Amazon marketplace and the manufacturer space that exists in the United States. And not only in the United States, but globally. So what is happening is our catalogs that we're receiving from our distributors, they're getting smaller and smaller. And the products that are remaining on these catalogs, the price is increasing just a few cents at a time, a few cents at a time, right? But soon, I remember, you know, March struck, it was March, I believe, 13th, the day after COVID got super serious. We did $200,000 in sales that day. Sebastian and I were here in the office at three in the morning, putting together $130,000 orders from one of our distributors. And they were, all the inventory was selling out in three to five days. It was fucking nuts. We were like, it, we, we talk about this as like one of the craziest times in our life. We were literally placing these monster orders and crushing it. And it was crazy. And I see the same thing happening that happened then happening now. It's in the process of happening. So just be mindful of this. Be mindful. You may need to go a little more aggressive. Hey, Ted, what's up, man? You, you may need to go a little more aggressive when you're purchasing some inventory because the same thing that's happening in March and April, we see it happening now. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. So that's my little pro tip of the day. Use that information to grow your business. Don't just take it and put it back here and leave it there. Use that information. Ted just showed up. Can you get nitro gloves at $10 a box? I need thousands, 10,000 boxes. It depends how many are in a box. $10 a box for a 50 count, $10 a box for a 100 count. It's already began. Yes, absolutely, my friend. Amazon Cartel. Definitely Nikki something Nikki Nixter Nikki Nixter yeah so listen you got me for a couple more minutes here I'm more than grateful and happy to answer pretty much any question you have there's no answer I won't or question I won't answer it's all open open for the taking here and the only dumb question that you have is the one that you don't ask that's the only dumb question the only dumb question is the one you keep up here um, so would you pay a little more banking on people running out? Yes, absolutely. Now, obviously you need to make, like I said, educated buying decisions. You need to analyze the listing, analyze the keeper charts, make educated buying decisions, and then make a decision on how much you're willing to pay extra. You don't want to go all out and pay, you know, $5 extra, double the price, but 
if you can make money on it, you definitely want to purchase it. And also, the thing about supply and demand is when supply and demand happens and the supply chain has an error like it does now or an issue like it does now, it is it is you, it is all encompassing. So it's not just this one distributor, it's all the distributors. So all the prices will go up. So what that's going to do is actually all the prices on Amazon will go up to reflect those supplier price increases. Waiting for my LLC and going to get your course. Awesome, Toma, Tomas. Excited to have you inside. Do reviews affect buy box percentage? My store only has one review. Yes, it can affect your buy box percentage, but the only way to get more reviews is to sell more products. So don't let that discourage you. Is eSellers RI beneficial for me since I'm still working full time? Yeah, absolutely. We have, I would say, about 25% of the students in eSellers RI, maybe even 35%, have full time jobs. They have full-time jobs and they want to build a side hustle to start generating some additional income. Maybe one day they'll quit their full-time job and do full-time Amazon. But a lot of them, they just want to make some, you know, an extra $2,000 a month in profits and bring in an extra, you know, $24,000 or $48,000 a year in profits that they could put in their pocket and take care of their family. So there's a lot of members in the course who do still work full-time. Uh, approval for hand sanitizer is as difficult, it's nearly impossible. What's the typical gross profit on wholesale? About 20%. Um, do you research the same products lists every month? Yes. Uh, well, we get updated catalogs. So no distributor you're dealing with is gonna have the same product list every single month. They're always gonna add products, remove products, higher quantities, lower quantities. So what we do is usually weekly or bi-weekly, depending on what the distributor is, we email our account rep, hey, can I get an updated uh, catalog with availability? And then they blast it over to us, we run it through our UPC scraper and life's changed. Is there a way to change what warehouse LTL shipments go to? No, there is not a way to, to choose the warehouse your shipments go to to the only way you can kind of have a little more control not choose but get it more convenient is if you do inventory placement which they charge a value for uh, do you guys have a template for reaching out to distributors yeah in eSellers RI you get about eight different templates of how to reach out to distributors whether it's through email phone call it's really game changer are you seeing delays in your shipment getting received at Amazon warehouses um, for us, no, particularly no. People in our course, they're seeing issues and we're addressing those now by teaching them some things where you can increase your receiving time. Um, and our products get received anywhere from two to six hours after they arrived in Amazon. One thing I suggest to everybody here is to stop using Amazon Partner Carrier, especially in Q4, just don't use it. If you don't want your shipment to show up to Amazon for a month, five weeks, then use Amazon Partner Carrier. Um, but if you, so if you want, your shipment to not show up for three to five weeks, then use Amazon Partner Carrier. But if you don't want your shipment, now I'm just getting confused. But if you want to wait a really long time to get your products into Amazon, use Amazon Partner Carrier. So I suggest not using them. I work full time, is it worth it? Yeah, Brian works full time. And he's doing, we just looked at Brian's sales. Brian, in the past year, you're doing what, 80K? It's an additional, let's say at a 20% margin. What's that, $16,000 in additional profit? Even if six of that goes to expenses, it's still 10 grand, homeboy. And he's not even selling the full year yet, um, this year. That was only year to date, and there's still three months left. So let's say he does 100K at 20%, that's 20K. Let's even say, and let's say six of that goes to expenses. Homeboy still made an additional $14,000 this year. How was your transition to wholesale business? I've been doing RA for two years now, just started reaching and working with the distributors. The, the transition talk took about two years for us to go from RA to wholesale. It did not happen overnight. It took about two entire years, but when it did happen, it exploded. Um, you know, we started maybe 100% RA, 0% wholesale, then we went to 90-10, and then 80-20, and then 70-30, and then 60-40, and then 50-50, so on and so forth, until two years later, we were 100% wholesale business. Follow Rodrigo. Opa, I have about 30K savings. What would be a good amount to start off? Um, so 30K, 10% of it, would you? I would invest to eSellers RI. 
and another 20% of that I would invest it in, in inventory. So um, that's a $9,000 investment. You keep the other $21,000 in your account, start with that $9,000 investment, buy inventory, and then just keep flipping, flipping, flipping that inventory. I'd never tell you to take your entire investment and put it into one place. That's just not a good business move. Put it all into one place. But $9,000 is less than 33%. It's about 30% of your entire investment, and I would suggest doing that. E-Sellers RI, 6K in inventory. Um, why Amazon is asking me for an expiration date on a product that does not have to be expiration date. Is it literally a scale? It is literally a scale. I would create a case. Sometimes they, they, they have issues like that. If it's not a food product that doesn't require expiration date, then you don't need an expiration date for it. But it could have just slipped through the cracks. So, Create a case with Amazon, ask them what's going on, provide them information. Do you do any listing optimization or run PPC or is it simply products with proven history and take a share of the pie? Uh, no, we do do some listing optimization and PPC, absolutely. We do increase the um, and optimize listings 100%, especially if it's a brand we're working directly with or even just for regular products we're selling. If we see an opportunity to increase the sales on a listing, we'll take advantage of that. When you first started placing wholesale orders, how many quantities of each SKU did you purchase to test the market even after detailed research? So if we're what we consider a test order, it's about 24 units, sometimes 12. We prefer not to go less than 12. The only time we'll go less than 12 is some real expensive product. We sell some products that you know, are two, $300. If I'm testing that SKU, I may only purchase four or five because I don't want to go spending $3,000 on a SKU I've never sold before that I'm trying to get, gather data on. But usually when we're testing SKUs, we do about a purchase order of 24 units. 24 units will give you a good gauge of how it's moving over the month. If you get less than 12 units, eight units, all you need is a fluke purchase, someone to purchase four units in one day, and then all of a sudden it looks like a really great product. And so let's say in two days you sell those eight products. Now all of a sudden you do four times 30, you get 120 units, and those two days of sales were just um, flukes and outliers, and it turns out that you're stuck with 120 units of inventory. So I hope everybody has a phenomenal weekend. I'm going to wrap this up here. Keep in mind what I talked about with the supply and demand issues and the supply chain issues that are happening right now. Just keep that in mind when you're doing product research. The solution to these issues is if you want to be a little more aggressive, possibly get five or six weeks instead of three or four weeks, then you got to do that. Got it. Makes sense. Thanks for the insight. No problem. Casual flipper. What's up, my friend? Thank you. No problem. Appreciate you, everybody. Have a lovely Saturday. Enjoy your time. We got one more question here. How do you approach old school brands that have been working with Amazon for a while but still have listings that Amazon does sell on? Uh, bring up the pain points of working with Amazon. Amazon has incredibly long net terms. Sometimes they don't pay brands for, you know, 90 to 180 days. Also, they don't, they don't, um, they don't abide by map pricing policy. Uh, they, they don't have customer support that's very helpful. You could sell yourself as being more of an opportunity for them because you are able to provide the customer service. When they have an issue, they call you directly. They don't have to contact Amazon, get transferred four different times to possibly maybe get an answer. They get the answer from you directly. So yeah, I appreciate you everybody. Thank you for spending your weekend with me. Have a beautiful Saturday. Stay grateful and stay lit. Check you on the flip side.